Well, I want to talk about floating point notation and specifically what's called the IEEE 754 floating point notation. And this will be for the single, um, yeah, single 32-bit uh, IEEE 754 floating point notation. The reason why there's a specific standard for writing floating point numbers, that, and most um, computers are using this standard now, the reason why there is a standard is because floating point numbers used to be written in a, quite a few different ways, and as you can imagine, that would cause a lot of confusion for um, programming for different systems. So the way this is written, this is so I'm going to talk about the 32-bit representation of this. There's also a 64-bit that I'll summarize at the end. But the 32-bit, basically what it has is, it, so you have 32 bits, and they're split into three different sections. So we have, so this section is one bit, and this is the sign bit. So this, so the, the number that's, or the binary number that is in the sign bit tells you whether your number's positive or negative. So if you, by um, the most common representation is that if you have a zero here, your number's positive, and if you have a one, your, ne your number's negative. So that's the sign bit, and then we have a exponent here, and this is eight bits. So your exponent is 8 bits. And this is written in a what's called a bias notation. So in this particular case, for the 32-bit, it's written in bias 127. And when I go through the example, I think this will make a lot more sense. And then we have, so, and then this is what's called the mantissa of your number. And so this is 23 bits. And this represents, this will actually represent a 24-bit mantissa. And I think that will make more sense to you once I just do an example. So let's say that we want to convert 20.5 into floating point notation. So I'm just going to say I have 20.5. The sign bit here and then I have the exponent, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I'm just going to mark what these are. And then I have the mantissa, which is 23 bits. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So this is the... Okay, so the first thing we can do is, first of all, this is a positive number, so we know our sign bit will be zero, so we can fill that in. And it will be zero because our number is positive. If our number was negative, we would put a one there. And so the next thing we want to do is we want to convert the 20.5 into binary. So, and we can do this in two parts. So the 20 is equal to 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. And if you're confused about how to convert the 20 into binary, go back and watch my video on how to write binary numbers. We have the 20, now we want the 0 0.5, and if, so I'm just, I'm just going to go through this real quick, but if you are confused about how to convert a decimal number to binary, I did a video on how to do that as well, so go back and watch that. So 0 0.5 times 2 is equal to 1, so this is, so we just put a 1 here, and that's it. So if we combine these, so 20.5 is equal to 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0.1. So now what we want to do, so this would be like step one was to put the sign in. So I'm just going to say step one, um, 
determine sign and then step two convert the number to binary so then step three would be to rewrite this binary number into scientific notation so rewrite in scientific notation and so this is the same method as writing uh, we're used to decimal numbers and if you're not so we're used to decimal numbers and so scientific notation would be something like let's say you have three three fifty four three thousand five hundred and forty two so if you wanted to write this in scientific notation you would just count over one two three and so then this would be three point five four two times ten to the third so writing scientific notation in binary follows the same method. You have 2 to a power instead of 10 to a power. So if we look at this, we want the 1, we want our decimal here, so we'd go 1, 2, 3, 4. So then we can rewrite this as 1 point, because we move the decimal over, so 1.01001 times 10, whoops, times 2 to the 4th. So this is our um, scientific notation in binary. And then one thing to notice about this number is if we have a number in binary, like in scientific notation, we're always going to, this first digit to just to the left of the decimal will always be one. And so we can save a bit space and gain precision by not saving that one because if we know it's one then we don't need to save it so only this part of the mantissa is actually put into the into the floating point representation so this one is left off so just keep that in mind so step four would be to convert the so we want to figure out what we need to put in the exponent and so we want to convert the decimal. So the, the decimals are written with a bias 127 in the IEEE 754 floating point notation. And all that means is that they've had 127 added to them. So if we have a, so our decimal is four. So we have four plus 127 is equal to 131. And the reason why this bias is used is because it makes it so that we so that all of the exponents will be positive numbers and so we don't need to worry about doing a signed or unsigned number a binary number in the exponent so 4 plus 127 is 131 so now we need to write the binary number for 131 and that is 1 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 1. And you can verify this by taking, so this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have 1 times 2 to the 7th for this spot, plus 0 times 2 to the 6th, because we have a 0 here, plus 0 times 2 to the 5th, because we have a 0 here, plus 0 times 2 to the 4th plus 0 times 2 to the 3rd plus 0 times 2 squared plus 1 times 2 to the 1st power plus 1 times 2 to the 0 power. And so if you go through and do this math, you should end up with 131. So now we can fill in our exponents. So that goes right here. So 1 zero 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 one one and then the last thing we do is just fill in our mantissa and so that's just this so the zero one zero zero one because remember i told you that the 
one, this one here isn't saved because we, we are assuming that our number will always have this one here and so we don't need to save that into the floating point notation. So we can just fill in the rest of this. So this is 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And then the rest of this is just filled in with zeros. So this is the floating point notation for 20.5. So if you put 20.5 into your computer and it converts it into the IEEE 754 floating point notation, this is what is actually stored. And I just want to show you real quick. So for floating point, we can either have 32-bit or 64-bit. What I just showed you is 32-bit. Just erase the rest of this real quick. So for floating point, so I'm just going to put down sign of single 32-bit. And so this is the one we just did. There's also a double floating point number that's 64-bit. And, so, and then remember we have the sign, we have the exponent, we have the mantissa. Um, the, actually, sorry, exponent notation, implied base, range, I'm going to fill all these in, um, and then what these numbers are in equivalent decimal digits, and value range. So first of all, for the single bit, the sign is represented by one bit in both the single and the double bit. The exponent is represented by eight bits in the 32 bit, and that's what I showed you already. And then 11 bits in the 64 bit. The mantissa has 23 bits in the 32 bit and 52 bits in the 64 bit. The implied base is 2 for both of these and the this should be exponent and then notation. So remember the exponent notation for the single 32 bit was excess or bias 127 for the 64 bit, it's excess 1023. And all that means is that for this one, we added 127 to it. And for the 64 bit, we add 1023 to the exponent. Um, the range is for this one, it's 2 to the negative 126 to 2 to the 127. So this is the exponent range. The exponent range for the 64 bit is 2 to the negative 1022 to 2 to the 1023. And then the decimal digits, we get approximately 7 with the 32 bit and approximately 15 with the 64 bit and the at the approximate value range for these is for the 32 bit 10 to the negative 45th to 10 to the 38 and then for the 64 bit 10 to the negative 300 to 10 to the positive 300. So I'm going to do one more video showing you how to convert a number a decimal number into the IEEE 754 32-bit floating point notation. So look for that next. Thanks.